pleasant night to all. Thank you guys for taking the time out to join us tonight um, here at the Ultimate Empowerment Church for our Bible studies. Um, we appreciate you guys coming on. Appreciate you guys joining us, um, being here with us, and um, present night to all to help us. Thank you guys for taking the, the time out to Lord. join. Yeah, get that off. Yes, appreciate you guys taking the time out to join us here tonight. Um, at the Ultimate Empowerment Church for our Bible studies. We're here to do nothing else but to lift up the name of the Lord because he is indeed worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun, somebody said, to the going down of the same, he is worthy. Um, from the time God has created the sun, um, it has been rising every day. Um, never, take a never take a day off. And... Um, else everything would stop. Um, and they said that it's from the rising of that sun to the going down of it, that he is worthy to be praised. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. He is worthy to be magnified. He is worthy to be adored. I see um, face, uh, well, Zoom is nicely getting populated. I um, appreciate you guys coming on. And um, it the, 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 the link um, is shared on our Facebook and YouTube page. Um, so, so for those that 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 don't have Zoom um, and they are attached to you in some ways, um, I invite you to to ask them to 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 join us on on um, on Facebook or on um, YouTube at this point as we lift up the name of the Lord in worship as we we study. Is word. We're continuing in our series, discerning between the Holy Spirit, um, our, the Holy Spirit, with um, and our emotions. Um, we have been getting into it. I think that we have um, this. We have this week a very, very good topic um, to get into because it's important. It's important for us to understand. There is a reason why one of the the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is discerning of spirits, um, because it's possible that that. Other spirits could be operating. Also, it's also possible that no spirit may not be in operation. It just may be flesh. It just may be be be, be somebody getting up and 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 it's by design or somebody pretending to be something or pretending to do something. So it's important for us as believers um, to be in a place where we can distinguish between the two um, and also um, allow for. Um, the, the spirit of God to lead us um, to know when, when it, whenever it is that he is operating or he's not. Um, so it's important for us to, to, to know that. I'm just going to check on um, the, 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 the Facebook to see that we are good and we are good up and running. So if you don't mind, um, bow your heads with me as we go before the Lord um, in prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for tonight. Thank you, dear God, for this opportunity to come before your presence to study your word. I pray, dear God, that as we delve into it, I pray, dear God, that you give us knowledge. I pray that you give us understanding. I pray that you open up um, um, the, the, the our mind's eye, dear God, to see the word behind the word, to see what it is that you want us to hear, what you want us to, to know, what you want us to extract. Um, from this study and from the scripture that we're about to read. God, we just want to say that we love you. I pray, dear God, that you'll use me as an instrument of yours. I pray, dear God, that you look beyond my fault and you see the need of your people and you use me um, as that mouthpiece, dear God, to bring glory to your name and to um, lift up your people and to move us to the next level. I pray, dear God, that as we study tonight, that, that we will all get something from this study and that we will all do something um, tonight with this word, that we will apply it to our lives as we go on. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Satan, we bind you in the name of Jesus. We come against all your plans and your plots. We render them powerless, and we declare and we decree tonight that God will arise and his enemies will be scattered. We give you a thank in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the church of God. Say amen and amen. Again, appreciate you guys coming on. Appreciate those that are on Zoom. Appreciate um, those that are with us um, through the means of YouTube. If you don't mind tonight, turn your Bibles with me to the book of 
Psalm chapter 42. Book of Psalm chapter 42. We'll be reading that and, and I'll may be going a little bit also into Psalm 61, um, but 42 will be um, where we will extract our lesson from tonight. Um, I think that um, one of the, 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 the uh, on our media post this morning um, concerning the Bible studies, um, something went out that, that actually was uh, uh, um, in line with what I wanted to, us to talk about tonight. Feeling Ooh. by her emotion and wondering, hold on, let me, let me get Give that. me phone, Josh. Oh, hold on, hold on. Ooh. Hold on. Let me get Josh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, um, so it's feeling overwhelmed by our emotion and wondering how to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. Join us for an insight Bible study session on Facebook, Zoom, and explore. We'll explore the crucial difference between our emotions and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Don't this this opportunity to deepen your understanding and strengthen your spiritual journey. All are welcome. That was that that was just so perfect um, to the thing that I wanted to talk for, for us to talk about tonight. And as I go into it, you will you will you will see why um, when we get there. All right. So let's go to Psalm chapter forty two. Psalm chapter forty two, and it reads thus: As the art hunted after the water brooks. So panted my soul after the O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of the Lord, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holiday. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, for the help of his countenance. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Ermanites from the ill Miz Mizar. Deep calling unto deep at the noise of thy water sprout. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the nighttime his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Ope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. We end the, uh, the reading of the word by saying, uh, praise be to God, thanks be to God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Why art thou troubled within me? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And I'm pretty sure that all of us have had some why me moments. I've had several of those in my in my lifetime, in my journey so far. I've lost jobs here and, and so on. And, and it has always been why why my company has to be closed down. Why 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 does this have to happen to me? Why is this happening to me at this point in my life or in my journey? And 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 and, and I'm pretty sure that that a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys 
um, may have been in positions like that, or even in position like that right now, where you're saying that, why me? Why should this be, be, befall me? Why, why is this coming in my direction? Why is this happening to me? So tonight, um, and, 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 and what that does sometimes for us is that when we're in that space, what, what it does is that it, it, it puts us in, in, in a, a, a frame of mind. It, it almost um, is encouraging us or discouraging us from, from doing the things that God wants us to do. So for that reason, that, 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 that entire uh, monologue that I just gave, tonight we're going to talk about God and moodiness. God and moodiness. Uh, I know that uh, some of us may have never heard that in any one sentence before. But 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 just oblige me, um, if you will, for a minute. God and moodiness. Mood is something that we have had from time to time. Just think about what we just read. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou this quiet is within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Why art thou cast down? Why art thou... Uh, why is this happening to me? Why is this thing coming in my direction? Um, I've been a good Christian. I've tried to be one. And then this is happening to me. And this is happening to me. And all these things. Where are those cast down? And then that puts us in a mood. Naturally, it will put us in a mood. But let us examine mood. And, and, and if you don't mind, um, play a game with me for a second. Let's play a game of what if. Okay? What if? The question, though, as we play this game is, what if God suffered from mood swings? Let that, let that sink a little bit. What if God suffered from mood swings? What if God got up, the Bible said that God stumbled in our sleep. But let's just, 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 just oblige with my folly for a minute. What if God is in a mood when you're praying to him? Like, you know what? I've been so upset today. You see that open is giving me so much trouble that I am just not going to answer anybody's prayer today because I am in a, I am in a terrible mood and, I'm, and I don't want to answer nobody's prayer. And somebody is calling out to God for help. Hey, hey, God, you know, your child here using the word to play that you'll be a present help in the time of trouble. And God is like, oh, no, I, you know, um, yesterday um, I, I, I wasn't have the best of days. Um, so today I, 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 I don't feel like to answer anybody that is calling me um, because I, I'm, I'm just not I'm just not in a good mood. That you're praying and asking God, God, you said by your stripes we are healed and so on. And my sister has cancer or, 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 or somebody have to, uh, tuberculosis or, or, or somebody have some kind of blood clot or something like that. And, and, and God, I'm using the word and God is like, oh, um, I'm Sister Marcia, I, I can't be bothered with that right now. I'm just in, I, I, I don't feel like doing the God thing today. I I I I I don't I, I don't feel like it. I, I I don't feel like my assigned job or my assigned task. I don't feel like I want to do that today. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'll get back to it. If I ever come back to it. What what if God was like that? That it depends on what is happening. That it dictates how he's gonna deal with us. It depends on what is happening that dictates whether he is going to do what he said or what he committed to do through his word. What if Jesus, and, and we, we are in the, the, the Lenten season and, and, and the, the, uh, the, the Easter season. What if Jesus was like, oh, um, well, the, that, that 39 lash was just too much. Like the, the first latch that they gave him, he was like, oh, no, 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 no. This is not going to happen. Send two angels and, and, and destroy 
this this soldier that is whipping me. That I'm not going through with it. This assignment is too rough. This assignment is too tough. Is mood change based on the situation? God and moodiness. What if that was the kind of God that we say we serve? How would you look at a God like that? Would you even want to serve a God like that? A God that gets upset and decide that, you know, I'm not dealing with this. God is not in a good mood. But guess what, though? That if you minus God from this scenario that I just painted, how about ourselves? Are we committed to what we're committed to regardless? Or do we allow mood to dictate? I don't feel like it. Um. Myself and Pastor Vanessa weren't having the best of mornings. So I'm 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 just not going to show up to church today. I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to do anything because the mood is not right. Or you're or, or you're usher and you're like, okay, um, you know, the, the somebody cut me off on the street and 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 on my way here, and I I just don't feel like it. So everybody needs to find their own seat today. God and moodiness. Can't go on the on. And living in a fallen age, in fallen bodies, in which our fallen natures vie with our regenerating nature for control, we unfortunately cannot avoid the plague of bad mood. We cannot. We are not, however, victims of mood. And we shouldn't be. And we certainly must not make others victim of them either, of these moods either. You know how much people suffer as a result of us swinging into a bad mood? So, good, good morning, Maurice. I, I, don't, I don't tell me in the morning. I want to hear in the morning from you. Like, I, I, just saying good morning. Like, like, what's going on with you? <laughs> Instead, we should develop the skilled habit of challenging our mood. We should develop the attitude or the habit to rule over them. And you can look in um, Romans chapter 6, verse 12. We said that, uh, and laying them aside so they don't weigh us down or others down. In this race of the faith, that we have. We cannot allow our mood to dictate to us. We cannot allow how we, how we feel to be the, the, the driving force that determines what we do and what we don't do. Because your feelings, my feelings, will change and are ready just like that. For those that that that, that actually work and, and, and is in the, the, the field where 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 you, you you do whatever kind of job, you know that sometimes you go to work and it's a pleasant day and sometimes it's it's difficult. You can't allow the, the, the environmental factors to then determine how you feel or how you carry yourself. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquietest within me? And we're going to go into the why. But the thing that I want us to, to understand is that our, our mood has a root. Our mood as a root. That's something that I want us to, to think about. Let's pause right there. We're not rushing. We're just at 720. Our mood 
as a root. It just doesn't come from out of the 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 the, 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 the nebulous state to to just attack us or 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 our mood. Our mood has a root. God and moodiness, our mood as a root. And I want us to just also bear this in mind. Because one of the things that we, we endeavor to do here at the Ultimate Empowerment Church is to ensure that we're not just thinking about building the church man. It's about building the entire man, man, woman, uh, mankind in this case. That I want us to be at a place where we are not just wholesome and functioning when it's time for church, but we are wholesome and functioning and functional um, in our private space, in our home, that we are living a spirit-filled, a spirit-led life where we're having joy. One of the worst kind of Christian that you can find is a miserable Christian. And I've seen some Christians, like extremely miserable, just just uh, the baptizing lime juice, and 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 it seemed like they still have some of the the tasting of that lime juice um in their mouth e even now, just 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 bitter, just miserable, just moody mood swings. But then come come Sunday, you know that oh my God, they they, they are they, they might get to a big time. But guess what? They're not living a joy full of life. And I want us to not have that. I want us to be at that place where we are um, allowing the joy of the Lord to become our strength. You are never just in a bad mood. When we feel irritable or cynical or discouraged or sad, we sometimes excuse sinful attitude by saying, I am just in a bad mood. Sometimes it's sin. But we excuse it by saying that we're in a bad mood. And moods never come from nowhere. Your mood comes from somewhere. We may not always be conscious of what fueling our mood, however, but we can be sure that something is triggering um, what's going on in us. As the ad panted after the water books we read, so panted my soul after thee, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? So the tears that he was identifying here, um, the, the sons of Korah was identifying here, he identified where what was triggering the mood, what was triggering the emotion, because somebody was 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 coming at him and saying that your God is not hearing you, your God has abandoned you, or 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 so on. So one thing that we have to do is that we have to drill down to see why am I this way? Why what what's going on with my emotions? What's going on with my mood? Cora had the opportunity to say that I am crying night and day, but I know why I'm crying night and day because they said to me, where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me for I had gone with the multitude and I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy days. So it's one thing to identify what's going on. It's another thing to say that, well, this is the reason why, um, why, why I think all of this is happening. Let me say this. And, and if you're taking notes, uh, I, I mean, I want you guys to, to, to get this good tonight. God meant for our emotions to be a gauge and not a guide. Let's go again. God meant for our emotions to be a gauge, but not a guide. So you're using this to say that, well, something is going on. Something is, is, is stirring 
um, uh, something is stirring me up. Um, I, I feel upset. I feel angry. I, I, I feel jealous. I feel scared. Um, I, I'm feeling all of these things. So the emotions that is down inside of us is giving us an indication that something has gone awry. But what we should not allow our emotions to do is to guide us. The gauge on your car, the, 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 um, the speedometer on your car is telling you that you're going too fast. And if the cops stop you down the street, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to get a fat ticket. The gas gauge is telling you that hello, um, hello, Sister Nicole. Um, please don't pass the next gas station. Um, you probably need to go over to that gas station and get yourself a little gas. I'm just saying it's a gauge of how much you have. So the emotions were designed to do that but it should not be the guide. The guide should be the word of the Lord. The guide should be the spirit of the Lord. The, God, the, the guide should be God himself. Our moods are at times affected by our body chemistry. So I don't want to, to, to come across as if we're unintelligent and we don't know that um, our body chemistry can be a bit off um, sometimes some kind of hormone imbalance or, or, or something like that um, that can cause our body to be um, um, to, 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 to be irrational, uh, to be irrationally emotional at, at some point. So, so let's not even pretend as if that's not always not at also a thing. And, and, and as I said, I, I want this study to be all encompassing. Um, so that we can we can we can be at a, a, a good place um, concerning this. Um, see, Sister Marcia put up um, just now Proverbs um, four verse twenty three. Um, do you want to read that, Sister Marcia? Because that probably um, will be helpful to us. Um, I'm trying to get get this thing going. Yes. Yes. Um, good evening again, everyone. Good evening, Pastor Maurice. Yes. Yeah, so. Proverbs um, 4, verse 23, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Thank you, sis. I want us to hear that. Keep the heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Life is going to happen. Life will be life in. That's, a, that's just the reality. Life will happen. Things is gonna ha things are gonna happen. Um, whether you're safe or you're unsafe, um, um, things are gonna happen. But we can't allow the emotions of life to dictate who we are, what we do, or the next move that we make. It's a guide. It's a gu a, a gauge, not a guide. And as I just said, that our we have to think about the, the, the natural things like a chemical a hormone imbalance and, and so on. When our bodies are functioning correctly, our mood are or should be fueled by our belief. When we can't say that it's some kind of emotional um, uh, uh, imbalance or whatever it is, our mood then should be dictated by our belief. And I'm talking about our belief in Christ. That's what should dictate what, what, what we do, what we feel. Meaning that I may feel sad, but, but guess what? I am bringing it to God because I'm casting my care upon him because he cares for me and I'm going to leave it there. And, and this may sound simplistic and it may sound easy because I, have, I, I for one, have had several wrestling with God and, and, and several heated conversation um, with him. I'm not talking about him being eaten to me. I'm talking about me, me being upset about something, something not going my way or whatever it is. So I'm not going to come tonight, um, um, Sister Julia, and pretend as if, you know, uh, I, 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 I just ride on, on my pony and, 
and 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 I just give it to God and I just leave it there and I I never get upset about anything. That would be hypocritical. That that also would be impractical. I get upset about things just like everybody else feels way about different things just like everybody else. But what I'm saying though is that regardless if I do that or not, the practical thing to do is for us to recognize that we should give it to God. Emotions are, God, uh, are gauges, not guides. God designed our body to work in sync with our spirit, to live by faith. He designed our emotions to be governed by our beliefs. Our beliefs frame our thinking and expression um, through uh, and how we express ourselves through our emotion. Our belief should be the, the main thing that dictates what kind of mood I am in. So I am tired, but I promise God that, that, that um, I'm going to the church to open the church door. That's my job in the church. And I'm tired, but God, you, you, you see and you know, and I'm, 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 I'm giving you the thing that you said that I should, uh, that, that I promise you that I would. I, I, I'm tired, but I have this ministry where I go into the, um, the nursing homes every Saturday to sing to the, to, to the people there and so on. But, but, but um, I, 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 I am not allowing um, how I feel to dictate that. And I'm not saying that if you're tired, um, you, you shouldn't get rest or whatever it is. Um, but what, what I'm saying is that the commitment that we have and the, the, the belief that we have should be the, 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 the framework or, or should be the center post around which um, we, we move into that which God calls us to do. We commonly call um, um, all these emotion manifested um, manifestations moods. Um, the, the, when we see the emotions um, happening, we, we call these moods, like, like you know, I don't want to, and, 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 and so on. There, uh, let, me, let me just say from a biblical perspective um, how some of these things that we're talking about work. I mean, he designed all um, emotion to govern our beliefs and our beliefs frame our thinking and express um, our thoughts through emotion. Um, Psalm chapter 42, verse 5 to 6 that we just read. It said, why are you thou cast down on my soul? And why are thou... You are in turmoil within me. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember thee. It's what it is doing is that it is recognizing what's going on, what's causing the mood, the things that is triggering what is going on. But then in the same breath, I'm not allowing the mood to dictate how I feel. Why thou cast down within me? Therefore, I will remember you. I remember God. I am allowing him to dictate how I go about doing this. In um, Lamentation chapter um, 3, verse 20 to 24, they said that my soul continually remember my affliction and my wandering and is bowed down within me. But this, uh, but this I call to mind and remember I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never cease. His mercy never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. Say unto my soul, therefore, I will hope in him. So what, what we're seeing is that we're seeing my soul is continually remembering, remembers my affliction and my wandering. But then it didn't just stop there because then I am not allowing my mood to be triggered. I'm not allowing my mood to be con controlled. I am not allowing my emotion to be controlled by that because the last thing that he said was that um, the, his mercy um, is never ending. Um, and they are, they are new. Your mercy is new every morning. The Lord is my portion. Say unto my soul, I will open thee. So I am not allowing the crushing of my soul through the affliction that I'm thinking about to control it. And that's what I'm saying, that the mood will come. But then we have to then take control of this. I am taking control of my mood. The worst kind of person that you can be around is a moody person. Like you, I just left out of the room, um, Sister Judith, and, and you were happy. And I came back in and you were crying. 
And I left out while you were crying. And I came back in and, and you start screaming at me. Like wide mood swings. Almost kiss the phrenic light. And I'm saying that as Christians, we have to, 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 to mature to, 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 to this place, knowing that we have to identify what's going on. John chapter 14, verse 1, let's say, let, let, let your heart be troubled, believe in God. Uh, who that believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Bipolarism, uh, Sister Judith, type in. Let not your heart be troubled. Because something is there that has the potential, that has the capabilities to, to get you off, to, to, to get you at a place where your heart is troubled. And the Bible says that, let not your heart be troubled. He that believeth in God, believe it all. So in me. In each case, some respond, someone respond to adverse circumstances with wrong belief. When you do that, you result in having negative emotions, a manifestation of turmoil, depression, anxiety, bad mood. That's what happens when we respond to adverse circumstances with wrong belief or with a wrong kind of system, um, uh, a wrong kind of way of thinking about it. Go ahead, Sister Yuri. Let's keep I'm driving. Um, there is a scripture in Proverbs, I can't think of where exactly where it is, that says that a man who cannot control his emotion is like a city without wall. And for what? years, I've often reminded myself of that scripture. A man that cannot control his emotion is in Proverbs, like a city without wall. All right, I'm going to pull that one up right now. I'll fix it at Proverbs 25, verse 28. A man who can't control his, uh, himself is like a city whose walls are broken down. And that's the um, New International Revised Version. Uh, uh, um, and, and thank you for that, Sister Yuri. Yeah, we, 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 we dealt with um, a few weeks ago um, in church, um, Nehemiah coming back to build the wall. That if, if any and anything can just run in and change your mood, then we're in problem. The remedy was remembering, calling to mind, believing the truth of God's promise. Bad mood reveal wrong beliefs. And right mood alter. But, but, uh, and right beliefs alter or were supposed to alter those bad moods. So the mood come but I have a right belief system. I am not about to allow the scripture that Sister Judith just made mention of in Proverbs 25, verse 28, to become my, 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 my portion. That a man without, who is not able to control himself is like a city without walls or the, city, the walls is broken down. Or I'm not about to allow no emotional governance or boundary to be my portion, as Sister Yudi just write in the chat. I'm not going to allow mood to take over, but I'm going to allow the belief system that God gave me to do that. This is why we say that emotions are gauges, not guides. They are usually reliable. Emotions, very reliable, to tell us what's going on. But they are unreliable to direct us where we need to go or what we need to do. All right, so I just feel sad right now. So I'm going to put on some love songs about people crying and I'm, I'm just going to cry because that's what the emotions want, right? I'm just, I'm just so upset right now. So I'm going to put on the angriest music that you can find anywhere. So the emotions is not just indicating to you what's going on, but it's also dictating what you do. And it shouldn't be the guide. 
Like, God, I'm feeling this way right now. I'm very, very upset. What they said about me really, really hurt my feelings and so on. And, 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 and I'm mad and, and, and so on. But God, I'm not ab allow, about to allow um, what they say to dictate what I'll do next. So I'm going to your word. I'm going to apply to your word to, your word to this situation. And I'm going to allow you to take control. Because mood as a manipulating power. And when, we, when mood comes in, we forget that the moods are gauges. If I don't want us to get anything tonight, get that your mood is a gauge, that something is going on. Because we're never just in a bad mood. Mood come from somewhere. Things that made us vulnerable, all sign of temptation. Satan can easily manipulate us when we would rather um, um, superficially alter our mood than address its underlying beliefs. All we have to do is think about our own besetting sin. They are often habitual sinful reaction to emotions and mood. And we just desperately try to alter our escape because we are trying to get out of the mood by getting into another mood than to address what's going on. What, why, why am I so upset right now? Okay, so I saw Sister Amelia and when, when I saw her, something just just stored up in my spirit and I got just so upset. So you know what? I'm going to watch me some cartoons. I'm going to watch me some cartoons and, 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 and I'm going to get out of that mood and get into another mood. Then to look to, so what's causing this? What is causing this emotional reaction to just seeing her? Should I dig deeper? Should I understand what this is? Should I address somehow what's going on on the inside? And if I don't know what it is, can I pray and ask God about it? And the worst thing that can happen is that we use our mood to manipulate others. You're using your mood to manipulate how somebody else feel. Well, well, if you if you love me, you 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 wouldn't have done it that way. That, that's one of the reasons why I know that you don't love me or appreciate me. Manipulation. Uh, well, did that come in by accident, Sister Judith, or were you trying to come in? No, I said I said narcissistic behavior. Yes. Witchcraft. Trying to get somebody to do something by manipulate by, by manipulative means. Narcissism. Narcissistic behavior, as Sister Judith said. Because it's about you. Mood becomes sinful, however. It weighs us down when we do not when we do not go to a place where we are trying to figure out what's what's going on. And then the devil comes in and he manipulates that and he uses that against us. And to the point where before you know it, we're swinging wildly in different directions, upset about all kinds of different things that we're not even know what we're upset about. We get to the point where, where we become so moody that, 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 that we're swinging wildly in different direction. So I said tonight, query your mood. For, for, for the quickest way for you to uh, lay aside the weight of manipulative moodiness is to wield our mood in the way God designed it um, as a gauge and um, for our beliefs. We must query our mood. 
what is fueling this? Why do I feel this way? And I'm not saying that I, uh, as, as a guy, uh, and, and, and some guys are really, really in tune with their emotions and, and they know what, what, what it is that they're feeling and they can articulate that and so on. I am not one of those guys. I'm not sure if Brother Overton is. Uh, I'm not sure if Minister Mario is, but I'm not one of those guys. The, the best that I have sometimes is that I feel a way. Like, like, you know, how do you feel? Uh, I feel a way. Like, what way is that? I, I don't know. Um, sometimes I don't know how to put it in, into words. I don't know how to, to articulate this uh, or, or so on. But the quickest way for us to lay aside the whatever weight is for us to query what's fueling what's going on. Why do I feel this way? And we have to then think about it. Is this body chemistry? happening is this some kind of trauma if she's pregnant it could be the pregnancy hormone is it like some postpartum um hormonal imbalance it, what what is it is there some kind of sickness do i have some kind of disease because sometimes the first indicator that you're coming down with a flu or a nasty cold is a vague discouragement or a low-grade depression. So sometimes these things are also indicators that you're not well in your body. And there is nothing wrong with prescription medication, disease treatment. Some of us, we're, we're on fasting, and sometimes when we're on fasting and, and, and the, 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 the lack of the sugar, you know, it gets us in a little mood some of us are are trying to lose weight and and and, and the sugar withdrawal uh, you know create its own mood and our body chemistry can be altered so we have to make an assessment concerning that if that is the case but even if we still have to fight to trust god that whatever is going on with us, we will not allow it to dictate what we will do or what God will do through us. Know that your mood is a built-in alarm system. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Question, the alarm is going on. Why art thou disquieted within me? I don't know. I can't figure it out right now. Trust thou in God because I shall yet praise him. Deep call it unto thee as the noise of thy water spout. All thy waves and all thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will call on his loving kindness in the daytime and his nighttime in the song. Shall he be and my power unto the God of my life. So I am going through all these these mood swings and these emotions, but guess what? I am giving it to God and I'm trusting him. I'm, I'm feasting on his word. I'm asking him what can be done. What do I need to do? What? I'm not just allowing it to take control. I'm not just allowing it to dictate how I, how I, how I feel and what I do. And the question is, does God have emotions? <laughs> and I want us to remember this, that we are made in the image and the likeness of God. Not the other way around. God is not made or created in our own image or in our own likeness. So it therefore means that God has all these emotions that we're talking about. The man Christ Jesus was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin. He is Emmanuel, he is God with us. In Psalm chapter 7, verse 11, it's, uh, it speaks about God being angry. 
In Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 22, in Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it speaks to that also. It speaks to God being compassionate in Psalm 135, verse 14, Judges 2, verse 18, Deuteronomy 32, verse 36. It speaks to God grieving in Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, um, in, Matt, in Psalm chapter 7, 78, verse 40. Um, it speaks to God as being a God of love in John, first John um, 4, verse 8, John 3, 3, 16, Jeremiah 31, verse 3. You speak about God ate these things I ate, uh, uh, these six things I ate, and the seven I can't consider abomination. Um, Psalm chapter five verse five. Um, Psalm chapter eleven verse five. Speak to God as being joyful or, or having joy in Zephaniah three verse seventeen, Isaiah sixty two verse five, Jeremiah thirty two verse forty one. So He has all these emotions, as we do. I'm just going to read this as Sister Marcia put it. Like a good father, he is not pleased when we are disobedient and won't repent of sin. And that's so true. As Sister Judith also put in, um, emotional intelligence is acknowledging the mood or emotion, but not letting it rule our actions and behavior. And thank you guys for typing in. So being that he has all these emotions, and he has all these feelings. Being a Christian doesn't guarantee you a storm-free life, but it doesn't promise a, but it does promise a storm-proof one. Now that's, that's that's really good. Being a Christian doesn't promise you a storm-free life, but it promises a storm-proof one. That you will go through the storms, but the storms won't destroy you. Storm proof. When God is on your side and walking with you, you can and will overcome any obstacle. God will for your life that dares to present itself. He presents itself in a way where he leads you and he guides you to the place that he wants. If we only allow ourselves as the emotions come to know that the emotions will not dictate what I do. People leave church all the time out of emotions. I'm, I'm upset. What are you upset about? I'm not even sure, but I'm, I'm gone. And it would be the same people that said, oh, God called me to this church. So what, God changed his mind or your mood changed your mind? Don't worry about anything. We have to refocus. On God's possibly in every situation that we may face. We have to refocus to say that, what? where can I find God in this? Philippians chapter four, verse six said, don't worry about anything. He said, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God peace, which exceed anything that we um, understand. His peace will guide your heart and make heart and mind and you will live in Christ Jesus. And that's one of, of those um, um, new translation. Tell him. Tell God all the while that I feel away about some things. Because as I said, I'm 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 really not as emotionally intelli emotionally intelligent as I should be. Um so God know when I say that I feel a way that 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 he, he knows what what I mean by a way and and I'm not gonna allow the emotions to dictate. I work in a a, a, a institution where um 
the kids that 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 that, that is there, um, the 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 students that that that, that is in the 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 institution itself, um, run afoul of the law, and and are there to 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 go into some corrective processes to to ensure that their their records um are expunged. And these kids are not necessarily there for educational purposes. They are there to complete the program. And these kids will say things to hurt your feelings, will tell you the worst kind of thing that you can find. No, you can't allow your emotions then to dictate how you feel for the rest of the day. Oh my God, like the kid just said that I was, was tall and cranky. So now, um, you know... Uh, I am in such a bad mood for the rest of the day. This is the first class and I have five more. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how well I'm going to teach you the other kids. Or you can allow that, you know what? I'm not going to allow that to affect me. You said that, but guess what? I am beautiful and wonderfully made. And, and, and this 14-year-old should not have said anything to hurt my feeling. Uh, I've been 14 like, 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 like more than 14 years ago. <laughs> so you're controlling, you're wrestling the power from anybody else to manipulate the way that you feel. You're not allowing circumstances to dictate um, how you feel. The Bible said that we should not be afraid of them. The Lord, your God himself will fight for you. And that is in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. And, and that's talking about to the Israelite when they were, were, were about to go in battle. That, that you should not be afraid of anybody. Because fear can so, the, 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 can so take over that we get into a mood where we are not at a place where we are trusting God, worshiping God, or allowing his word to take control. For I know the plans that I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to arm you. Uh, and plan to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 20, verse 11. I know the plans that I have for you. So whenever you feel like, oh my God, my life is drifting out of, or, or just drifting aimlessly or whatever it is. And, and I'm, I'm just in a mood. I'm, I'm just upset because this is happening and this is happening. Then I am no, I know the God, I know the plan that God has for me. Plan to heal, plan to deliver me, plan to give me an expected end. And I know that whenever it is that I go through struggle, as Paul said, but but he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. That even when I'm going through struggles in the flesh, I'm not going to allow the emotions, the mood to take me over, to be my guiding post, to, 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 to be my North Star. I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to allow what somebody else says to determine what I do or what I become. And you don't want to be that Christian. And I'll say this finally. You don't want to be that Christian where people can know when things are going good for you. Because it will be like, oh, good morning. Good morning, Miss Maria. Good morning, Sister Carol Barrett. Good morning, Brother Obchen. Because you're in a good mood. And then... You're not in a good mood as a Christian. All of a sudden, Brother Opton is invisible. Sister Carol is invisible. You're not saying anything to them. You're walking around with, with, with your face um, all, all wrinkled and, and, and crushed. You don't want to be that. You don't want to be that. We can't allow ourselves that mood will dictate what we are, who we are, how we move, how we operate, how we function, emotions taking over. That we will allow the emotions that are, um, uh, that, that 
um, that come upon us that we will say that, well, this is a gauge because something is going on and I need to get to the root of this. But I am going to the word of God for, to be my guide as to how to deal with this because I will not be led by emotions. I will not be led by, by, by any of this. I will be led by the spirit of God. I'll be led by the word of God. I'll close by saying this. In Psalm 61, the Bible said, I hear my cry, O God, attend unto my power. From the ends of the earth will I cry, up the, cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, when I'm emotional, when, when, when I feel away, when I don't know how to express it, when my emotional intelligence is not um, 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 acting as it should, lead me to a rock that is higher than I, because I'm crying unto thee, but I will not allow my emotions and the way that I feel to get the better of me and to dictate what I do, how I do it, how I operate, how I function. I'm going to allow God to lead me and to guide me. And I'm not just going to allow myself to be dictated to by the way that I feel. God and emotions. With that said, do we have any questions, any comments before we close out tonight? Um, this I I consider this topic to be something that 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 was interesting to me because it kind of opened up you know a few things for us to understand that you know emotions are normal and they can be biological and they can be emotionally driven and they can be chemically driven but guess what it can also be some sin or something that we need to dig into to find out if we need to get to the root of it so that it doesn't guide us. Go ahead, Missionary Marcia. Good topic, um, Pastor Maurice. So, you know, you asked the question, is God moody? I would say, yes, he is. Because, you know, you read in scriptures all the time when the Israelites sin. Oh, oh, God would pull away his presence from them. He would dry up the land. They would go through famine. They would be captured by the enemy. And all that. that is God moodiness. That is him pulling away, turning his face from his people. And I think David has a psalm where he says, um, I'd not your face from me. Something like that. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. So um, when we as believers, you know, following in the footsteps of Jesus and we, we are living in sin and we don't confess our sins and we don't repent and, you know, we're not in the word. We are like those Israelites who were disobedient to God. We are living in sin, and that's not what he wants for us. So, so the, the, it's, it's a good study tonight, and I, I really en enjoy it. Not that I don't enjoy the ones before, but this one, you know, it, it is so um, eye-opening, and it's a lot for us to think about. So that's one of my, the reasons why I like it. So okay. thank you, Pastor Maurice. Hope it bless somebody tonight. Well, I, I I pray so also, and we give him glory. Um, to to um to your point where you say that God, um, you think that he is one of the things that we have to realize about God, and and when it comes to the Israelite, is that it's never the first offense that God steps in and like, okay, I'm done with you guys, or I'm I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna do that. The the person that is moody, um, doesn't give it even give it an opportunity to to think about what. What, what they're upset about the the when it when it comes to God and because we saw when we were studying um the judges that they would be in going against God for years and then he finally give them over into the end of 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 the enemy or 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 something like that so so we 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 have to be careful from that perspective when we we think about mood because um, God gives you a first chance, a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, a sixth chance. And then at some point, he will then say that, you know what? 
um, yeah, that's that that's enough. Um, I, I, I'm I'm going to have to do something about that. Uh, go ahead, Minister Mario. Yes. Um. Good night. Good night, Pastor, and um, everyone. I just want to to share this. Um, it's a good topic. It's a great topic, Pastor. And one other thing, I can share a quick experience with me. I learned that as a Christian, as a believer, I like to use a believer. As a believer, we have to we we, we have to fight through the emotion, and you ex you, you you express it very good when you you give a an example that is not just saying you know my God will supply all my needs and you're gonna feel good same time you know you have to sometimes as believers we have to fight like really press through the situation I remember you preached um so um a word when you you mentioned that you know, most of us, if someone step on our toe, we're ready to, to fight and we're ready to cuss them out and that energy and that strength we have. Sometimes we have to dig deep and fight through those emotions and you cannot fight it with your own self. We have to fight it with the word of God and that helped me when I when I get into the the spiritual realm and I start to use the word of God and, and that that helped fight through the emotion. So it was a it was a good message um this morning um tonight and um I will definitely meditate on it tonight. I appreciate your minister Mario. Um any other comments and any other questions or or anything anybody else want to to add before we, we, we close out tonight? Just check in, check in, check in. Here. Yes, go ahead to say you did. Yeah. Um, just wanted to say, um, I know I typed it in earlier, but um, yeah, acknowledging the emotion, because a lot of people feel like, say, Christians can't have emotion. We can't be emotional. We can't be sad. We can't be angry. The Bible does itself tell you you can be angry, but do not sin. And don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So you have to first come to the truth that you are feeling a certain type of way. As you said, uh, Pastor Maurice, I feel a way. Find out what that way is. Why am I feeling this way? And work through it. Don't just give yourself over to it and, you know, throw in the towel. But understand that emotional intelligence begins with finding out or acknowledging, yes, I am feeling this way. I am angry. Why am I angry? But not letting that anger take over everything I do. And the next thing I do, nobody knows what it might be, I might murder somebody. No, you work through it and control it. Don't let it control you. God bless you. All right. And thank you, uh, thank you, sis. And thank you for, for sharing. Because one of the things um, in closing um, I want us to, to realize is that um, the, the scripture that you just read, um, be angry and sin not. Um, anger is an emotion. But... Yep. I will not allow the emotion of being angry to cause me to sin. Because somebody can snap at you and the snapping that they are doing at you has nothing to do with you. They woke up and, 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 and they have some things dealing with. They have some issues dealing with. I remember once, uh, and, and uh, let me just do this real quick. I remember once um, that that there was a occupational um, therapist. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a special education teacher um, in 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 this uh, in in the education field. Um, that 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 she reached out to me and was almost screaming um, in an email. And I typed back to her and, and 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 said that you know I'm not sure what's going on with you, but the like the, you know the anger that you're sending in this direction, I think that it is misplaced. Um, so if you if if you want, you can give me a call um, after afterwards, and 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 we can have a conversation because she was talking to me about something, but then she was screaming, um, going off 
at me for something. And then we had a conversation sometime after. And she was saying that, you know, somebody else did her something like just momentarily, um, just a little bit before she was typing this, this angry email to me. Uh, and it has nothing to do with me. So sometimes we have to understand that sometimes the, 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 the mood that somebody is in, if we're not careful, then it will cause it will cause our mood to then change to something else. So now they're in a mood. Now I'm in a mood too, because you know, um, I'm, I'm just saying that Sister Marsha come and spoke to me like that. And, and 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 she shouldn't talk to me like that. So now I'm upset. So now Sister Mar the, the person is upset. Now Sister Marsha is upset. Now everybody is upset. So we're no longer looking at the, the, the gauge that the mood is. We're now looking at the, the mood as a guide. We can't allow that, brethren. Can't allow our mood to be our guide. Can't allow it. Are there any other questions, any other comments before we close out tonight? All right. All right, so before we close tonight in prayer, um, just want to remind you guys that we will be having our fun day, our field day at Granada Park um, here in Phoenix um, this Saturday at 12 um, um, p.m. Um, we want you to in, uh, invite as much people out as is possible. We're going to have all kind of different games, all kind of different um, fun activities, including an egg hunt. Um, the final event for your child, uh, for, for the children that will be coming. So I want we want you to invite as much people out as is possible. Invite your senior friends. Um, there will be activities. We'll not just be limiting it um, to those that go to the church. Um, once you can, you, you, you're stretched properly and, and you can run. We put you in the race, put you in the, the different things. Um, we have three houses and you can join yourself with one of those. We want to have a good, fun, hallelujah time um, this Saturday. It will only be 81 degrees across, according to the weather. Um, so it's not 100 degrees. It's not too cold. It's not too warm. So we want you to come on out. Um, we start at 12 promptly. And for those uh, for the team that has the most people at that point, um, they will get some extra points points and so on. So we just want to invite you guys out um, this Saturday um, to our annual, our fourth um, annual um, sport day, field day, whatever you want to call it. We will be doing that. Um, bow your heads with me as we close out tonight um, in her. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for tonight. Thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity to come and minister your word. Dear God, you say that we should study to make ourselves approved. So we studied tonight. We we delve into your word. We pray, dear God, that what we have studied, that we will apply it to our lives. I pray, dear Father, that you will help us, dear God, to not just be hearers of the word, but help us to be doers of the word. Help us, dear Father, that what that which we have learned, that which we have read, that which we have studied, that we will apply it to our lives. Help us, dear Father, that the word will become flesh in us that it will manifest itself in us and that it will bear fruit. We pray, dear God, that we will not just be hearers of the word, but we'll be doers, that we will live the word. We will walk the talk, dear Father. We will live in a way in which you are pleased. God, we just want to say that we love you. I pray that you'll continue to protect us, continue to cover us under your blood, continue to lead us in the path of righteousness. I pray, dear God, for blood coverage over us, for you to build an edge of protection around us and about round about everything and everyone that is attached to us. I pray, dear God, for protection on the streets as we drive to and fro work and as we go about our daily um, business or, or the daily activities that we'll do. I pray for protection. I pray, dear God, for you to cover us under your blood where the devil can do us no harm. God, we just want to say that we love you, we praise you, we worship you, and we adore you for hearing us and answering our prayers um, and our cry, but it will we fail to pray and ask you for tonight, oh God, if it is in accordance with your will, I pray that it will be done. We give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the church of God. Say amen and amen. For those that are joining us on Facebook, YouTube, 
Um, this is where we take our leave from you. We usually leave you a little bit earlier than those uh, that are on Zoom. Have yourself a blessed week. And as I said before, if you can join us this Saturday at Granada Park in a park in Phoenix um, for our um, annual sport day, please do that. God bless you. Or if not, you can join us um, on Sunday at 3331 West Catalina Drive, Phoenix, Arizona at the Olin at the Ultimate Empowerment Church for Divine Worship at 9.30 a.m. Whether in person or online, we will welcome your presence. God bless you, our e-church members on YouTube at this point.